Today we have the eyeball from a robotic swan. Today we have a swan security camera. Uh, and it doesn't work. He did something wrong. Someone, someone did something wrong um, with the power input. So, anyway, any ideas how to get it apart? There's uh, no screws. I have an idea. It has a seam. Let's see if it undoes. Oh, it's turning. It's very tight, but it's turning. Just the glass is rotating, not the center of it. Ta-da! Yeah, bit of foam around the camera might be to try and seal it from moisture steaming up the lens and a night vision IR LEDs and a sensor at the bottom to detect low light so that can come on and one screw there and one screw there I can smell something. What's going on here? Uh-oh. that nasty brown stain around there? It's actually kind of fluffy. Hands up, who knows what gives a fluffy, cardboardy like impression. Anyone ever just stick a capacitor reverse polarity across their beach supply just for the fun of it? I guarantee you that's what's happened here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone's used a power supply with a, the wrong polarity and it's just annihilated this input capacitor. Yep, not much left of that one. There's an empty can that used to be the, the outer shell and a whole lot of Oil. Well, at least the can's in one piece, we can get a value off it. Foil wrapped in fluffy, cardboardy like substance substances. Uh, oh, here's the base of it down there. Oh, yeah. Now, for that to happen, either it was I'm going to say reverse polarity, but it could have been greatly over-voltaged. Um, yeah. We need to look a bit more at the circuit and see if it's uh, burnt anything out. Okay. Um, well, doesn't look too bad in there. Uh, luckily, none of the electrolyte seems to have uh, corroded anything. It's just awfully furry. <laughs> Um, and sort of, yeah, really goes with a bang. It's sort of really impregnated itself into everywhere in the blast radius as it flies outwards in all directions. <laughs> you have to give it a bit of a squirt and a brush down to see how it comes up. Where is my brush? Not looking too bad at all, actually.
So what I'm going to be concerned about is that little switching regulator there, which I'm picking will be switching off that inductor there, and there's one down in the bottom right corner there. So uh, those two could have taken the full brunt of the reverse polarity slash over voltage. What rating is that cap anyway? You can even have a look at it. According to the top, 16 volt. So yeah, this is a 12 volt camera. And 220 microfarad. So it's either had 24 volts or um, yeah, negative voltage. So I guess all we do is replace the cap and do a quick measurement to see if it's shorted or not. That would be a good start. Um, any shorts to ground perhaps? So which one's negative? Who knows? I'm picking We'll go with the exposed copper there, and we've got yeah, three million ohms across the capacitor there. And then, if we check across the output, so we go across one of these, we're looking at uh, yeah, a few thousand ohms there as well. It's definitely ground side. That's ground. That's 20k. That one's ground, and that one's 2k. I thought that was going to be a short. Never mind. Okay. So so far, um, with our these are obviously our output capacitors. Um, the uh, oh here's another regulator over here um, let's see what's that one let's try that that's uh, 20,000 ohms and we'll try that one that's possibly a linear regulator or maybe something totally different a bit of glue Yeah, okay, it's looking good. Let's replace that capacitor and put some proper voltage onto it and see what happens. Well, I misread the website and it said my local agent does not have any stock of this. And discontinued in the world of the modern bloody electronics and the discontinuing stock of SMD components. How about that? Although, granted, not too many hobbyists are probably getting into it. Either that or there's just no hobbyists in my area. <laughs> but uh, that's fine. Let's just uh, see what we can do. Maybe we can squeeze on a, a full size through hole unit. See if I can get this off without ripping the pads. <laughs> There we go. Well, pad's going to come off anyway. Nope. All right. Oh, we might have a winner. <laughs> eh, well, maybe not. I saw 220. 220 volts. No way. No way. This is an older. Uh, uh, what's this one? Microtech Groove wireless radio router board. Uh, probably 24 volt. And see if I can work out exactly what value that is. Well, if this data sheet is anything to go by, we've got our 220 microfarad and C relates to 16 volts so this uh, will probably do the job
Here it goes. <laughs> Just when I was about to grab it. <laughs> oh, wow. She's a tight fit. Definitely larger than the last one. Just butting up with the diode, in fact. Oh, right on top of that resistor there. Might have to get creative and trim the uh, sides on this. Got around the wrong way anyway. Let's go like that. Uh, that's a bit better. <laughs> the corner's trimmed off by the resistor. If I can park it there at all. No, I think I'll cut it down a little bit more. Uh, we got lots of room under there. So it does go, go upside down actually. This doesn't face up into the sandwich side of the board, so um, nothing to worry about there really, is there? Give our cap a little trim so we can avoid that resistor. Probably use the side cutters for this actually. Be a lot easier. Might just do that. That's quite a hard plastic. Like it was made for the job. Let's clean those pads up under there so it'll sit nice and flat. Still going to be a bit of a stretch to solder that on, I think. Might just have to do it from underneath. I can't see me getting enough heat through that tiny little what's what's left of a pad there. Hmm. <laughs> so, what's the best way to do this? I need an angled tip, that would make it easier. But over here, of course we've got to contend with those guys, which aren't really going to give a damn. And this plastic unit, which is around the CCD, so I might have to take that off. That's going to have a shutter in it for a uh, infrared filter for the night vision mode. If I take that off, then I've got more area to work with to, to heat from the other side. <laughs> yeah, cool. So we have our BGA mounted BGA mounted CCD there. See the balls under it. So if we get you liquid enough, you're gonna you're gonna come off as well. You're not gonna come off. Um, we don't really want to get that liquid. We don't want to get that hot in any way. So I might need to isolate that somehow throw a metal shield over it and I think being quite careful not to scratch it of course there we go found a uh, an old bit of uh, mobile phone shield which is taller than the CCD so it's not sitting on the top of it and that'll shield it while we apply heat to this corner make some solar melt hopefully enough for that to turn liquid and then maybe be able to see it turn liquid and then uh, we'll drop the cap onto it get a bit of fresh onto those pads
doesn't need to be a huge heap of it. Mm, unpopulated diode. Quite possibly reverse polarity protection that they decided wasn't necessary. Might be replaced with that one. No, that's got to be the switching rectifier. So, if this was reverse polarity, then that would have saved it. And uh, would have blown a fuse a bit further down the line. Um, but instead, it's not there. And it decided to take out this poor little cap instead. So I'm going to start with 400 degrees. Add a bit, a bit less than full speed airflow. We'll even put a little bit of flux on there. And find my cap. Anyone see what I did with the cap? <laughs> hmm. I seem to have misplaced the most important part. Found it sitting out of view on the other side of the vise. So, negative is right. We want it to sit down that way. And just in case, I will have tweezers at the ready. I don't fancy grabbing the can while it's nice and hot. There it goes. There it was. Actually, liquid. What I didn't see though is the positive side melting. So we'll see if we can get to our um, positive attached. But strangely enough, it didn't seem to. Liquid, push it down. That's better. Okay, so how is our CCD? Looks pretty mint. And around here, that took the brunt of our heat. Not a problem. Try and clean up some of that flux around there as well. And we'll do one final resistance measurement just to make sure that we're happy. And we have a board that won't stay in the vise. Oh, got to stop. I always put too much pressure on these little probes. I don't know. They're I don't trust the quality of them to be honest. Nine meg, yeah, tons of uh, tons of room to move. And now we stick it all back together. Let's not forget the heat sink, which is a couple of thermal pads. One also one for the one for the regulator down the bottom. One for the CPU. Might as well brush the fluff off that as well. Don't need fluff floating around inside to get on the inside of the lens, even though it's got a shroud, yes. You probably wouldn't do that. <laughs> what way did it go? I think it was that way. It kind of lines up with everything. And what do you know, it doesn't work. <laughs> Should have checked that kinda before I screwed it back together, kinda. But um, whatever. Um, bit optimistic there. Let's have a, a closer look at things and see what's going on with the power applied. Okay, so let's take some measurements. Uh, let's see what have we got. We'll go five volts per division on that one. And it's only drawing 40 milliamps really not a lot going on, nothing getting hot. It's 
So we'll do a quick look around. Now our power comes in over here, so we should have 12 volts there, which we do. And after there it goes. It's a bit hard to see these brown solder masks, not not a good one. We should have 12 volts on the cap, which we do. Uh, what have we got down here on this capacitor? We've got nothing. So just hiding all the detail from you. <laughs> so I was measuring on this cap here. We have nothing here. Of course, we have nothing on that diode. This regulator is obviously not switching. Let's see what we do have. There's probably a couple of volts there. Nothing there. 12 volts there. 12 volts there. This one's there. Nothing. Center is probably ground. So being a regulator, I think it's usually in feedback or enable was this one enable that one could be enable because that's also high as well that's 12 volts back here should be feedback which means that the switching is not taking place yeah, there's very low voltage there about two volts um, one to two volts nothing on there, nothing on here, nothing down here. So that's our main one. And if we look back over above the CPU, see if there's any voltages on these pins. So we've got nothing here, nothing here whole lot of nothing so that one may even come off the um, other one that's not operating so why is the other one not operating so if that's our feedback this is probably a feedback resistor divider Let's see if it can't prove that shall we Sure looks like it. Let's pull the power off that. Grab our multimeter. Multimeter. We should have a connection to here, which we do. This line should be connected to our output, which we do because that's our diode. It's going to be rectifying uh, off the end of the diode, which will enter the resistor divider here. The centers to our pin here and this side should be ground, which it is. So our voltage divider, one end on our positive, one end on ground, and the center to our reference pin. So that proves this one's not switching. Uh, it's probably suffered as a result. Now, what's the, uh, <laughs> before I damage it too much, what is the number on that? Let's just make sure our diode's okay actually, in case our, if that's blown open, then it won't have a, uh, any reference, will it? Nope, 0.24 volt drop, which is a high speed diode to be expected. And again, we don't have a short off the end of that line. I'll just double check that. Off the end of that. No, we've got a few thousand ohms. So pretty confident this device has failed. But yeah, what is it? I do have a couple of those, but uh, unless we know the number. A bit easier with a less light on it. You can actually read it. Well, I can read it. <laughs> so we've got upside down. Uh, six three five nine six eight five zero. 
Let's do a bit of a research and see if we can find out what that is. Okay, so the first possibility is this one. It's an ACT6359. But this is a um, constant current driver for uh, running an LED or LEDs, mini LEDs, up to 10 LEDs even. So whether they've repurposed it for um, just a general power supply, um, but uh, it has a, uh, what have we got there, 500 milliamp output peak for integrated 40 volt MOSFET, okay, anyway, if we have a look, it's the same package, but um, not quite the pinout I thought, uh, and I'm pretty sure I didn't have it upside down, hang on, let me just double check the orientation, yep, so pin 1, which has the, the low voltage on it, switching pin like I thought pin 2 is ground then 3 is our over voltage protection so the the chip is disabled if the voltage on that pin goes above 1.2 1.2 1 volts so it's not really much um, let's see if you can see that better 1.2 volts um, and pin 4 is feedback and 5 is enable, 6 is in, uh, we had nothing on 6, we had in uh, 12 on 4 and 5, so it's probably not this device even though the number is, is similar, so we need to have a another look-see. Um, so what's this? Definitely not. That's a transistor, microwave noise tube, um, microprocessor supervisory circuit, Mac 6351. 6351 to 6360. So this is a voltage monitoring chip. Is it our chip? Where's the package info? Oh, here we go. Well, it could be. <laughs> um, it very well could be. We have a closer look at those. Um, yeah, uh, VCC, WDI. What is WDI? Pulse width. Uh, watchdog input. Ah, watchdog input. Okay. Interesting. So the watchdog input uh, must be a pulse width modulated signal so that uh, reset, active low reset, so long as the uh, pulse width modulated signals there then it won't put out a reset signal so this is designed to reset the CPU should things go astray funny though that it looks more like a switching regulator because it's off the end of a coil and a diode and everything I don't think this is our um, our device see this is what I think it is and it makes a lot more sense that uh, Pin 5 and 4 have 12 volts, so that's in and enable. And uh, pin 1 is our, um, well, whatever. <laughs> I think that's that's uh, tied in with the switching. Um, one of those goes to the MOSFET um, and one to the coil, I think. This one, this one comes off the end of the diode. We'll have a look. Um, and ground and feedback. So... If we scroll down, sure enough, there's an application circuit. And there's our diode, our inductor, and uh, I guess we have to check that diode is backed off the ground, but um, 
Oh, okay, a little capacitor to the pin one there. Uh, we can check the circuit to see if it has a capacitor. And uh, feedback, resistor, divider, and um, yeah. Uh, so let's have a look at pin one, see if it goes to a small capacitor of some sort um, through to pin six. And that diode is on the other end of ground. Um, and this will probably do, depending on the feedback, three or five volts uh, out. And pin one to pin six, pin one to. Oh look, little capacitor. Does that go to pin six? Oh look, here's to pin six. So I reckon that's exactly it. Uh, what have we got? Boost, ground, feedback, enable, in, and switching, which comes off the diode. Wait, does our diode go to ground? Our diode goes to ground. Oh, what do you know? All right, and this is just. Uh, I went for this particular data sheet because this is one that I have in stock. Uh, and the other side of this whole equation is everything that I've found in in devices um, have used a feedback voltage of 0.6, and everything that I can purchase as a replacement regulator requires a feedback voltage of 0.8 so that's a bit of variance in our output voltage now uh, I think I'm just gonna run with it for now because I don't know what it should be but it's probably supposed to be 3 we could probably work out what the um, no we couldn't <laughs> we're only guessing if it's 3 volts it would you know, or 5 volts that would change our divider resistors it wouldn't really help at all um, so how about we just drop this part in, it's dead anyway, and see what happens. Show of hands for who's keen. Promise I won't make it smoke. My tip's a bit big for this, don't you? <laughs> really should have changed it. Just uh... here's our replacement. I'm gonna get pin one round the right way. Should we have a grip before we get the air on it to blow it off the table? Never to be seen again. There we go. Make sure they are perfect, dude. Good enough.
power on. Shall we take a measurement? See if we have. Uh, I'm trying to work out if it's drawing any more current than it did before. I don't think it is. So we're at. Uh, Yeah, let's go one volt per division. A bit easier to read. One, two, two point eight. Is it enough? Who knows? We've got point eight. I'm gonna say it's point eight on our feedback line. It's entirely possible that uh, that's not enough okay so we've got that much what's happening down below in the bottom corner which looks like another rig or something but this is this switch goes out to our um, shutter motor so whether this is just shutter motor control oh it looks like it's oscillating away there so what do we have on this we have just over one volt okay well it could be like a just over one volt CPU have we got any signal coming out of our video out how about that that would be interesting wouldn't it oh that could be a video signal. Absolutely could be a video signal. Maybe we've done it. But that's low. That's I would have thought three volts, but that's only chugging around two point eight. <laughs> Maybe it's enough. Maybe it's enough. Okay, oh well, we may as well see if there's a uh, a picture coming out of this then. Right, so we'll plug it in, see if we've got an uh, image. Hello. <laughs> we got some sort of a signal before. Well, it's making a buzzing noise. I think the buzzing noise is trying to move the shutter. It can't do it because there's probably not enough voltage there, not enough um, grunt. Maybe we've got to get the feedback line up to... Uh, 3 volts or 3.3 .3. and the data sheet gives us all the values that we need which is pretty good of them have a look at the table we can see 3.3 .3 needs to be those values of resistors R1 uh, straight off the output and R2 is our resistor to ground uh, you can work it out by that equation there of course but you know they've done the hard work for us so I need to find if I've got those resistor values on hand and hopefully I do let's start with seeing what values we have already because that may may be able to use one of those and the only way to do that is to remove one because while they're all in circuit you'll get the wrong reading This one is 12K. So we got 12K and 30K. So here's a handy little website uh, for us lazy people who know the theory but just can't be bothered thinking. Uh, this is equation solver, uh, symbolab.com. Uh, if you Google equation solver, though, it's the top first or second result. And you can see there's our equation, and that matches our data sheet, that one there. So solving for V out, which we call X, 
we put in our resistor value R1 equals R2 V out over 0 0.81 minus 1 so that comes out to when you hit the go button X equals 2.835 and that's pretty much what we were seeing on the scope it was a 2.8 volt rail but I think what we need is absolutely a 3.3 volt rail instead things will be a bit happier we need to change a value to get X of 3.3 it's not much different if we lower R2 that will have that effect and um, what stock I have um, I've got 10k, let's put 10k in there, it is 12, let's put 10 in, see how much different that makes the uh, result. And that's 3.24, so meh, what if we were a little bit lower there, huh? What if we're just a little bit lower? 3.3, 3.24, I don't really have anything closer. I've got a 52k in that size, a tiny little resistor. Um, 52k if I put that in here and see what happens as R1 what do we get 5 volts <laughs> you really don't want to do that I guess <laughs> okay it's not going to work so we're going to keep our 30 and our 10 Now she's drawing more current. So that's probably a good sign. What do we got here? 1, 2, 3.2. Look at that. The equation works. And then we've still got our, what should be a picture. Okay, do we have a picture? Nah, I'm still getting that same clicking noise coming from it. Nothing coming out. Yeah. I think what we're looking at is possibly a TVI signal because certainly if I move it around you can see some changes in things but um, I don't think that's composite yeah I mean I haven't seen a TVI signal before and uh, but uh, although that kind of does look composite doesn't it I don't know <laughs> it's late I'm tired um, but there's something coming out of it uh, actually it does kind of look composite -y when you stretch it out like that if I cover it with my hand it's all pretty dark it goes pretty flat and the light's shining at it Move my hand across the front of it. Yeah, some kind of motion there. <laughs> okay, so this is the signal with it plugged into the TV. It can't do it. It's struggling. That's interesting. So let's have a look at the uh, the voltage and just see if it's maintaining. Okay, well, I've decided that it is working, but it is not putting out a composite signal. And I've just grabbed a different brand of camera that I've got here, and I will show you on the scoop. This is a composite signal coming out of a known good composite And that is substantial. Just turn the voltage down. There we are. One volt per division. 
So that is a known good composite signal. And if I compare that to, this camera also has TVI. It looks similar, but it's not the same. It's not enough. It's missing a little bit of information. And that's exactly the sort of signal we're seeing out of the other camera. So I can conclude that SWAN use TVI in their 1080 cameras and that it is most likely working and my TV of course can't decode that so I am going to leave it at that and call it a win and uh, I hope that helps you guys work out any uh, regulator issues that you've got on your little circuits um, yeah it's not overly difficult the hardest part you'll probably have is finding uh, a supplier um, and then waiting for it to be delivered but uh, I think most most countries are pretty good there's always something around so um, yeah I'll, I'll have to leave it at that and uh, thanks for watching so I thought we'd just um, a little bit of a bonus info and um, have a look at the composite signal uh, versus the CVBS uh, sorry, yeah, composite CVBS versus uh, TVI, and uh, let's see them side by side. The one at the top is our composite signal in the yellow, and the blue is the TVI signal. Yeah, so looking at that, um, they have similar um, starting. So you can see the um, the uh, each frame identified by uh, I think it's the blanking line which um, goes, call it goes low for a, a, a second or two, well, microsecond or two. <laughs> um, and then there's a bit of, um, uh, I think it's color burst information. And then I really should have this on a different capture so I can kind of point it out to you. What if we go, now I can kind of point it out. So this is, this is our um, beginning of frame, I believe. And then it comes up here, and there's some what they call color burst, and then it, then there's all our different white white levels and so on, until we have the next, well not frame, sorry, scan line. <laughs> this isn't one whole image. I believe it's one line of the image. Um, but anyway, yeah, you can read up all about that to know for sure. But you've got our starting line uh, pulse there, very similar on the. Um, uh, TVI signal which sort of had me a little confused because like I said I haven't looked at composite signals in a lot of detail so when I saw the TVI one I thought kind of looks composite and and all through here through the um, the uh, the white level info and whatnot it was moving with the when the image changed it would change because you can normally see a lot of movement on here based on what the image is doing um, and this was doing that too so um, similar but not quite so yeah if you guys are ever unsure what you're looking at there's the difference it's um, it's some kind of digital signal or digital over analog or something but um, yeah interesting hey eh? well thanks for watching